Hi, I'm Sharon Stewart from Bed Voyage. We're having a little happy hour today with Jerry Sinna from Sinna Good. And we're interviewing like-minded sustainable companies and we're talking with Jerry today. So Jerry, thanks so much for joining us. And I would like to ask you what inspired you to start your company? Thank you. Sure, um, let me have a sip of my old fashioned first. I've got my Pinot Gris. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to sit that down. Um, well, so let's see here. So by trade, I am an architect um, and I am a jewelry designer as well. And so when, when, when you ask me about my company, to me, it's the whole uh, collective. It's not just the jewelry. I have been doing uh, sustainable design before it was even a trend, basically, um, over 20 years ago. Let's see, I'm 45 now. So I was in my early 20s and I was in design school. And um, pretty much, you know, I grew up with a mother that had a great taste for vintage clothing. She had a stash of baubles and costume jewelry that she'd let us play with. So I, that was, you know, uh, something that kind of shaped my uh, choices for fashion even though we grew up of course shopping fast fashion walmart target you know there were five of us so when i was in design school and had the freedom to kind of be a bit more creative but i didn't have the money um i started to look for uh vintage things uh, estate sales because i learned early on that as much as i love fast fashion which you know basically is what you get in the box stores the you know amazon and there's a place for that but for me personally it didn't make sense to wear it one season so just with my uh, design degree is in eco sustainable design my jewelry kind of marries that so i'm always looking for something that i can wear over and over and especially if i make it you know i want something that um will last and you know vivian westwood says what does she say buy less choose well and that totally defines my jewelry my architecture and so um the jewelry side just it just kind of happened. It was one of those happy organic things that uh, students in the design program, you know, just basically started buying things off my neck. And I thought, oh, you know, I don't have any money. I'm still in school. And so, of course, you know, that was slow fashion because it was whatever I had found, you know, at the estate sales or the thrift store, put it together with a few new pieces you know and um, had this little income and then I as I got older I uh, started to frequent um, art galleries and was noticed and that right there was a pivotal moment in my life and my career because I was like oh I can make a living at jewelry design so I was picked up as a gallery um, house artist and I will say that, that was really important because then I was able to outdo myself like what what can I do? What can I find? And I mean, I would find things on job sites and, you know, uh, thrift stores and put these really ornate one of a kind pieces together and they would just fly out of the gallery. And I thought, wow. So to fast forward, I um, took a break from architecture, moved to Seattle. And for the first time in my life, had access to so many thrift stores. <laughs> because in Little Rock, there are a few that and so that really changed my life. And that's when I started using the word slow fashion. And of course it's trendy now and I mean, I'm happy, but what does that mean? You know, I was, I had moved, um, I'm from the South, obviously. I grew up in the country, but I immediately moved into a city situation. You know, early on, I was 18. 19 and you know lived many good years uh, in Seattle and it was funny how I think I found such a sense of community and slow living you know I cook for my friends we would thrift and all of that kind of fell into my jewelry and um, just year by year things started becoming more sustainable and then now of course like I said it's trendy for us to be sustainable um, and what that means to me is that I'm creating pieces that yes you know I do have to source some things in bulk but if I can uh, educate you, if I can tell you, you know what, this took 20 hours by my hands or an artist's hands, you know, the thing is, is maybe you will decide to invest, not just in my company, but in other companies and really choose better and buy less. And so 
the jewelry just kind of organically, you know, it's a, um, I don't consider myself just a jewelry designer or a jewelry company. It's a, it's an aspect, it's a collection of everything that I do, but um, it just kind of happened and um, it's very meditative to me. I love it. It's my contribution to the world and I would prefer to put out you know, fewer well-made pieces that you're going to give to your kids, that you're going to wear season to season, rather than just dump all this product on you. And so yeah. I know that was kind of windy, but <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually in the middle of writing a blog right now about slow fashion, yeah. but in, in essence, uh, because we make bamboo bedding and uh, towels and linens yes. for babies and so on. And I'm writing a blog right now about how I've had to downsize a couple of times and wanted to by choice, but now I'm living in a smaller place. I'm up in the mountains, actually just hanging right. out here through the COVID and, and looked at all my clothes and all my shoes and all my coats and the dishware and everything that I had, you know, way too many of. And I've had to really look at, do I need 38 pairs of shoes or can mm -hmm. I get by with seven, you know, and because I need the space. So I really appreciate right. I love jewelry. I have a lot of that as well. And I just had to go through and pare down my jewelry too, so that I am really living more with ones that I love that I can mix and match and, and wear. And I noticed on your site, um, on your Instagram, I scrolled through and looked at a number of your earrings in particular. And I really saw that you've got a love of a triangle or a fan shaped item. I do. And I wondered if you could just tell me a little bit about that. What inspires sure. that for you? So I love that question because I could literally talk to you for an hour about what inspires me. And, you know, it's really interesting because when Sarah sent me the questions, I thought, oh, good, that's on there because I was going to include that anyways. But, um, yeah, because I actually have a triangle on here. So, I mean, obviously, like the most cliche answer, you know, uh, art, nature, architecture, and, you know, all of those things inspire me. But I wanted to be able to tell you, like, a little bit, like, what is it about this? Because that's so generic. So because, you know, I am a designer and architecture is my background, um, we'll start with that. So particularly, obviously, structure. And so, I mean, this is a very, and this is my donation we'll talk about yeah. for our giveaway, but this is very organic for me. So what you can't see is even though it is, it's a handmade chain and there's lots of natural elements, it still has structure. I mean, this is handmade chain. It's almost knotted. And so it's heavy. Like you could really take it off and whack somebody if you need to. <laughs> and a lot of my earrings, I do have what I, it's really hard for me to do dainty. And, um, but I, I obviously do it. But for instance, these, we all know Kelly works for, and she's a really fabulous interior designer. She's very fashionable. And these were actually, um, she had a chair last year that had a textile on it. And they had a lot of, um, the fabric had a lot of right angle triangles. Mm -hmm. And so, it wasn't supposed to be a part of this spring summer collection, but I mean, I had to include it. I thought, oh, well, you know, so what I saw first was the geometry in that chair, and then it was the color. So with architecture, it's m mostly the use of lines. And so the geometry, um, the materials, you know, I use a lot of brass and bronze, a jewelry grade, and some silver, but uh, particularly brass and bronze. And it's because I love the way that it patinas over time. And I mean, I do have clients that say, am I supposed to polish this? And I'm like, you can, you know, and it'll look completely different if you just let it age naturally. So the um, architecture, for sure, um, really inspires most of my pieces of jewelry. But, you know, I love vintage materials. There's so much pattern in them that folks are, are shy, and I actually obviously don't have any pattern on today, but, um, and I don't wear a lot of pattern, I, because my jewelry is where jewelry the colors shine. and the pattern comes from, yeah. um, but, you know, I love uh, artwork, uh, particularly the Renaissance, and it's not so much the imagery or what's going on in it, it's the use of light, and it's mm -hmm. the colors, because, you know, back then, that's when they were still making the paint and things like that, and so, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much, if I had, obviously it's architecture <laughs> for yeah, the earrings. I could tell. But, um, you know, some of it comes from my own designs. Some of it comes from, you know, just traveling. And I follow a lot of Instagram feeds, which, uh, you know, it's like abandoned places. There's so much great stuff. I mean, Instagram is such a rabbit hole, but it's uh, lots of great inspiration. But yeah, so it would be um, structure and um, 
architecture and roof slopes. I mean, you know, the angle of a wall, the texture of a wall, something like that. But yeah. I'm an artist too, just for fun, watercolor. And people would laugh at me yeah. when we go into art galleries because what I would do is I'd get really up close and I'd like put my eye this close to it and I'd say, what medium is that? <laughs> And, and people would laugh at me because I was looking, is it acrylic? Is it gouache? Is it watercolor? I love that. Yeah, I'm very much into that. Now with those, um, the jewelry that you make, so you're saying that you get a lot of your pieces from kind of uh, thrift stores and, and kind of antiquing and that kind of thing. Um, what actions do you take that make it particularly sustainable? Okay. So to clarify, so um, when I'm 20 something years ago, I did get probably 80% from thrifting and state sales. And then, you know, as much as um, I do include, you know, some upcycled or vintage pieces, it's probably not um, that quantity now, but you know, it's always there. So because basically, when I decided to go wholesale, which means that I create a collection and you know, I'm sure it's similar in the textile linen world as it is with fashion. We're on, a, we're working six months in, in advance. And so like I'm trying to fabricate uh, orders for my current collection, you know, get buyers to order my fall and design spring of 21. And so the hardest uh, thing, yeah. So you, I mean, you know, I'm sure it's the same in the um, home goods, soft goods. But um, the hardest thing for me is when I decided to go full-time jewelry designer um, was when I moved back in, I guess about 2012, 2013 to Seattle. And I had accounts and I thought I went to the shows and got the accounts and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. The hardest thing was actually finding um, U.S. Uh, goods, uh, beads, gemstones, materials, because the majority of those things come from other countries. And so it just opened up a big window of, okay, you know, all right, obviously I didn't have the funds to go on buying trips and go to India, go to Asia and source these things. And so there was a, that was particularly an issue that kind of, just by nature defined me as slow fashion. Um, I'm going to put out these collections and you know they're going to be as big or small as I want and it was just kind of one of those things when it's gone it's gone because you know I might order a thousand strands of turquoise once and never find it again mm -hmm. and so you know by nature you're already going to be a small batch studio and offer smaller um, you know lines of jewelry. Uh, right. At one point at my largest point um, I was you know, 8,000, 9,000 pieces. And that's a lot, you know, that's a lot. And it was a struggle to find the production work. You know, all of this was being produced out of a small uh, space in the International District in Seattle. And so it was really difficult to constantly try to source, you know, sustainable gemstones. And that that's a whole nother article in itself, you know, trying to find those in the fair trade, you know, no child labor. But these are things that I would look at. And the harder, you know, that it became, it, that it became, it made me downscale. And I thought, okay, I can't do that anymore. I cannot offer with good nature, you know, uh, conscience, 8,000 pieces and have no idea where this lapis came from. Mm -hmm. And um, so the thing is, is that I slowly started coming out with these mini collections to where I would get back out there and, you know, uh, source things um, as far, and it's easier now. I mean, you can find things online, but I need to pick it up. So I would say that with my jewelry collection, um, uh, probably most of it is brand new. You know, it's new materials and it's just trying to find them from reliable sources that are fair trade, that there's no child labor involved. And if I can find it in the US, like all of my medals are from the US. And so um, then that's even better. But each uh, year I do about two mini collections and they are many because for instance, I'm going to show you, I got props. So these are the sweet nothing earrings. And these, so there'll be, uh, and there'll be maybe five pieces of jewelry in each collection. And these are made out of about 70% um, vintage or upcycled. So there's loose side, there's some shell on there, some coral. And, 10 earrings on the skew and that's it. And so you can't make a living off 10 earrings on the skew, but right. that's a goal of mine is to be able to um, 
incorporate those into my uh, normal collections. And as far as, you know, trying to be a sustainable company, you know, besides that, um, downsizing my packaging, I mean, but that is difficult because, you know, I'm sure when you ship out bedding, Gary, we, I'm up in the mountains during the COVID. I'm staying at my cabin way up high in the mountains and we have really slow bandwidth and you're frozen on the screen and I can't hear you right now. So I'm hoping that you are able to come back. It looks like Jerry's gonna be back with us. Here she comes. Oh, hey. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was okay, just sorry apologizing. About that. Um, apologizing yeah, we're, that we're up here in the mountains and we've got okay. slow bandwidth. Thanks for coming okay. back. Yeah. Um, okay. So now tell us well, you I'm gonna blame it about on your, your but, beautiful um, new they, earrings. You know, we have some lag time. You were just talking, yes, so I was going to ask you they, about your new things that you're, um, that you're working on. And I think you were just showing us one of your new lines. So you can finish up if I, if you got cut off there. I was, yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So basically how, uh, how I offer sustainable products. I mean, and that's a good question because besides educating people and trying to use, you know, it's not feasible for me to put out um, all of my collections with completely upcycled vintage. I mean, it's just not the nature of what I do, but I'm incorporating these mini collections and I was showing you, yeah, some of the pieces that are up to, you know, 75% um, vintage. So those are, that's one way. And um, the other is trying to downsize the use of plastic in my packaging. And that's something that I really had to struggle to get because we are, I am a wholesale company. I sell retail, but also sell wholesale. So that means, you know, 1500 Different. earrings to somebody in Canada who's going to resell it. And they want each of those pieces in a plastic bag. And that has been a struggle for me to say, why? You're just going to take it out. Exactly. But you know, that's how it is. When you buy things, everything needs to be sealed up properly. And some companies I can, you know, say, they can say, okay, you know, put 10 of them together in a bigger bag. And so it's just educating, not just retailers, you know, as well as the consumer, but it's like, why do you need a plastic bag, which it's never going to stay as soon as you put it out on the shelf or, you know, it's going to, you're going to throw it away and it's going to end up in the ocean. So that has been the biggest struggle for me is to, uh, to just try to get other ones to realize you don't need that. But then no, again, you know, it's even um, educating people. Like tissue paper. And, like, do you sometimes right, and tissue put paper. the tissue paper with a little sticker or something, and then they're just going to take it out and hang it on their little earring rack anyway. So that's, you know, anything you can Love do to get that. away from plastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so well, I... and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know... Go ahead. Sorry, you go ahead. You go ahead and then we'll... No, that's uh, okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, unfortunately, you know, buying recycled and eco-friendly uh, packaging is always a bit more expensive. And so, of course, you know, people would rather go to the plastic bag, but, uh, you know, it's just, it, you know, hopefully they can recycle it. <laughs> I know that I, I do when I get things in a little plastic bag, I actually save them like in my sock drawer. And if I'm going to be traveling or something, I'll take my necklace and you know, that little yeah. trick where you can put your necklace and hang part out and zip part of it. Yeah. And then when you travel, they don't get all jumbled together. So I reuse those for anything I can. Smart. Definitely. Um, okay, what we're going to talk about next is for the people that are watching and want to enter our giveaway, which items we're going to be donating. So Jerry has been um, really generous and offering a gorgeous necklace. She happens to be wearing it. She's going to tell us a little bit about it and its value. And this is going to be given to our winner along with, and I'll tell you about the Bed Voyage product in a minute. So go ahead, Jerry. Okay. Okay, well, I'm very excited because this is actually one of my more sustainable pieces. Um, this is called the Shaman's Talisman, and it's all handcrafted. And as you can see, I don't know, there's chain in there, but um, the coral and actually the, the quartz on the bottom is from a vintage piece. And so I actually did this first for a gift and then, of course, shared it on Instagram. And um, everyone's, where do you, it's not on my website and so and it is because it is another item which is mostly sustainable and 
um, you know, there's, I have enough materials to make two more probably. And so I would value it at about $395, but it's just a great warm white. It has coral, it has uh, some gemstones, some wood, and it's just something that you can wear through the seasons and you can, you know, give it to your kids when you're tired wearing it. But yeah. that is what I am donating. With that Sharon. is absolutely gorgeous. And that's the kind of thing that you can dress down with a t-shirt and jeans yeah. and totally dress up. Could you do me a favor, Jerry? Would you mind? Yeah. Um, take it off again. I'm going to have you put okay. it up close to your screen so that people can see a little bit more detail of it. You can put it up real close to your okay. camera and hold still. Oh, that's so pretty. Yes. Now we can yeah. really see what it looks like. That's perfect. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So you Fabulous. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. And Thank then what you. Bed Voyage is contributing is a 100% bamboo uh, duvet cover. They're reversible. So it, we have, I think, eight different color combinations where you can pick a light color on one side and a darker color on the other and two to three euro shams. So if you have a queen bed, you nice. just need probably two euros. If you have a king bed, you would like three. And the value on that is $279 from Bed Voyage. So we've got about a $700 package here that we are giving away. And I'm going to tell everybody, I'm going to read Yay. from... I'm going to read what the rules of the giveaway are. So you need to like this post, tag two friends, comment below on how you're spending your time at home <laughs> during the COVID. And uh, lastly, be sure to follow at Bed Voyage and at Cine Goods on social media. We'd also like you to share your Instagram stories or profile for a bonus entry. Best of luck. And the drawing is going to happen on April 17. We'll announce it on social media. Okay. The contest is open to U.S. residents of 18 years and up. Jerry, we thank you so much for spending the time with us today to tell us thank about you. your company. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers to you. Happy I hour. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks. You bye -bye. as well. We'll talk with you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.